Hello, this is Joseph Drust. I am a senior character artist in the gaming industry, and this is a Pixelogic Z Classroom tutorial on GoZ and Metal Ray for 3D Studio Max. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up your ZBrush file to quickly establish a renderable Metal Ray scene inside of 3D Studio Max. So here we have my model. It is about 45 million polygons and contains 25 subtools. Now, I've gone through and have poly painted this entire model. So, if I come down and turn that on real quick, you can see that all the individual pieces are actually poly painted out through the magic of ZBrush. Now, what I want to do with this model is I want to export out into 3D Studio Max and do some renders inside of Metal Ray. Now, normally, this process would take quite a while with 25 subtools. Um, before the addition of the multi-map exporter and GoZ, you would have to generate all these maps individually and export them all out. Then export out all the geometry and then import both the geometry and the maps inside of Max and relink them all in order to uh, get your render established. Now with GoZ, you can now do a lot of this with just one single click of the button. So to start off, we have to get this model prepared for use inside of 3D Studio Max. There's no way we could bring in 45 million polygons inside of Max and expect it to render. It's just not that, uh, it just doesn't work that way. So first we're going to just, uh, we need to set up UVs, low resolution meshes, and maps for each individual subtool on this model. So to do that, we're going to go to the glove here, and we're just going to start with that. So here we have a glove. It is 2.3 million polygons. It has eight subdivisions. And if you scroll down here to the UV map texture displace and normal, you'll notice that they're all blank. So this mesh has no UVs established on it and all it has is geo and then the poly painting. And so we need to generate maps and UVs for this model in order to export it out into 3D Studio Max through GoZ. To do this, we're first we're going to scroll down to the first subdivision of the model and see we have a polygon mesh that's about 145 uh, points. Now this is a little bit low for uh, bringing stuff in and then using it as a displacement mesh. It's going to give you a little bit of issues with the uh, just how low polygon it is. So I'm actually going to take this mesh and go up to subdivision 2 and then delete lower. Now it's a good habit to do this across all your tools. This just gives you a little more resolution for when you go inside a max and it will help you uh, help your displacement map project a little better. So after we do this, we need to get some UVs on this map. Now, right now it has none. So I could export this out into another tool and do it that way, or I could just use UV Master. Now, UV Master is up underneath the Z plugin uh, menu at the top. I'm just going to take that and drop the toolbar over here so it doesn't vanish on me. I'm going to come down to the UV Master tab and open it up. From here, I'm going to turn on polygroups and symmetry and I'm just going to hit unwrap. Now in the amount of time that that took, it has unwrapped the entire mesh for this hand. And so we can come down here and check the UVs now by going to the texture map tab and hit new from UV check. And as we can see, the hand is now fully unwrapped and ready to get uh, textures projected on it. So we're going to turn that off. And we're going to turn polyframe off. So now we have a low resolution mesh that can go up and down from seven subdivisions now down to one instead of eight. And we still have texture and displacements are still blank. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to generate a displacement map. To do that, we're going to come down here and we're going to turn adaptive on and set the D sub picks to two. Now there's many different procedures and processes of generating out uh, display some maps from ZBrush. Um, this one we're just going to do simple 16-bit and then uh, have it ready for go for go Z. You can export out 32-bit, you can export out 32-bit three channel ones and uh, a whole bunch of other options you can just turn on and off through here. Depending on what your render can handle and what it wants, um, you can export out a variety of displacement maps. For this one we're just going to go simple and just use the 16-bit uh, adaptive. So now I'm just going to make sure I'm the low res and I'm going to click create displacement map. 
this will tell you it's processing up at the top of the screen. So now we have a displacement map generated right here. And you can see it's now actually being applied to the mesh. So we're going to turn texture off and that will turn the displacement off as well. Now we need to get the texture map. So I'm going to go up to the highest resolution here and I'm going to do new from polypaint. And so now we've updated our texture map with the poly painting that was on the surface of this model. If you turn texture on and off, you can see there is hardly, there's no change basically from the texture and the poly painted version of this model. You can slightly maybe see a little difference, but it's, it's almost none. So now we have our diffuse map done. We have our displacement map done. And now we just need to generate our normal. So we need to go back down to the lowest subdivision. And go down to the normal map tab. I'm going to turn tangent and adaptive on. And then hit create normal map. And so now we have a normal map created, a displacement map created, and a texture map created. And also we have a low resolution mesh that has 574 points. So there we go. So now that subtool is ready to go to GoZ. Now to see what this does, we're going to go up here top to the top, and underneath the tool palette, we're going to go to GoZ. Now what this is going to do, it's going to take this hand, this glove, and export it into 3D Studio Max, and attach the displacement map, the normal map, and the diffuse map to it. So I'm just going to click that button, and then click continue on this dialog. and it's going through all the subtools and exporting. Now it should start up 3D Studio Max automatically and then import in your mesh right into the scene. So here we have our glove inside of 3D Studio Max. If I simply just hit render right now, it's going to render the object with Metal Ray right off the start. So there's our glove inside of Max with a displacement map modifier applied to it. Now, <clears throat> if I open up the Material Browser and we select the icon and I click the model, you can see that it actually has a shell material applied to it. So underneath the original material, we have a Direct Nine, uh, Direct X Nine shader being applied, and this is actually linking the diffuse map and the normal map. If we go to the baked material, you see it's just a standard material. And if we go to maps, you'll see it has the fuse, the bump, and underneath the metal ray connection, we have a displacement map linked up. Now, one cool thing Gozi does is that it actually, underneath the displacement map, it configures the minimum height and the maximum height values for you. So this takes out a lot of the guesswork that you'd have to set with the RGB offset inside the... Uh, displacement maps in order to get a normal render to render and look right. So now that we have this mesh in here, you can see there might end up getting some displacement errors or seams depending on uh, your displacement map settings. This one, uh, if I click render, let me actually get it closer. I'll hit the render button. Looks like we're getting some slight things over the fingertips here. And one way to kind of alleviate that issue is to just come up and put a turbo smooth modifier on it. So we're going to do that and then we're going to put it up to 2. And so now we're going to hit render again. And it's going to take a little bit longer this time because I upped the geometry on it. And so that looks pretty pretty decent. It's uh, very fast. I mean, you, there's tons of metal ray settings and different material settings you can come in and play with. Uh, this just gives you a huge start on getting any of your maps in. With all these maps already being linked, you can come in and actually take these maps and apply them out and link them up quickly to a, uh, another uh, material if needed. Now, these maps are all stored inside your users folder if you're using Windows 7. So this is users, public, pixel logic, GoZ project slash default. And so if you export out any of these maps, through GoZ, they're going to dump them into here. So this is a just a quick way to come in and find maps if you need to link them up as well.
Now that we have one object in here, um, we need to import the rest because right now this is only a glove, but we have an entire model with 25 subtools. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one and then just uh, reset my uh, material slots here. And we're going to go back to ZBrush. And inside ZBrush, we still just have our glove visible. So now I'm going to go up to, say, the body. And as you can see, I've already gone through all these subtools and created a displacement, a normal, and a texture map, and had them assigned to all these slots. So I've gone through already and established the same thing we did with the glove, but just for the rest of the subtools. Gozi has the ability to allow us to export all these out at once and import them all in. So this is, instead of us going one by one, the thing and exporting out each geo and doing all the maps, Gozi is going to take a lot of that work out. The first thing we want to do here is go down and hit this all low button underneath the subtool pad. And this is just going to take all our subtools down to the lowest subdivision on all of them. This will just help with the switching and the speed on the export for Gozi. Now I'm going to make sure that only the tools I want have the visible icon next to them. Um, I have some other files, subtools in here like a supremely high resolution cloth pattern and a default uh, cloth that I had on the top of my subtool list. So I make sure those do not have the visible icon on. Now that I have all the ones selected with the visibility and each one of these subtools has a map applied to it in their slots, I'm going to come up here and click this visible button at the top here. I'm just going to click that and then hit continue again. What this is going to do is just going to be like what it did for the glove, except for all the subtools that are visible in my Z tool. And it's going to do the same thing where it's going to link them all together with their normal map, their displacement map, and the diffuse texture, and import them all in automatically into 3D Studio Max. Now it should start importing all these different pieces. Over here you can see the it says name and color kind of which subtool it's on. And that's that. Now it's done. So really took no time. Now if you look at our model now, we have our entire model into 3ds Max with all the normal maps applied in the viewport. If you go to the material thing again, you can now pick any uh, different pieces of the subtool and you'll see they all have the shell materials on them with the same kind of setup as before with the maps and the displacement plugged in with the displacement values already set. So now we've just taken our entire 25 subtool mesh and threw it right into Max with uh, one click of a button. Um, you hit the render window again and you'll see that it'll render the entire scene with uh, displacement maps. Why this is doing this, um, other things you might want to think about doing is just like we did for the glove, put turbo smooths on the actual objects. Because you can see some areas down here on the uh, piece of armor right here, you're starting to get a little bit edge creasing. And this is, again, uh, between the displacement map and the actual uh, tessellation of the geometry. So here's our rendered version, right from ZBrush, right into uh, 3D Studio Max, rendering in Metal Ray with a click of the button. Now from here, you know, there's tons of stuff you can do with Metal Ray. The first thing I'm just going to do is put a Turbo Smooth on this. So I just selected everything and went over to the Modify area and put Turbo Smooth. I'm just going to put a Turbo Smooth of 1 across the board. So now with the Turbo Smooth applied, you can now see that some of the, you know, those harsh edges are now gone. So that's pretty much it for GoZ and 3D Studio Max with Metal Ray. Hope this helped, and uh, happy ZBrushing. Thanks.